You're watching WSB Now's Access Atlanta, your source for local things to do, weekend events, travel destinations, and so much more. Watch and discover how to make the most of your weekend. Get ready for a fun, exciting weekend in Atlanta. First up, Sip and Safari. Head to Zoo Atlanta for the Sip and Safari event. Sample all kinds of wine, enjoy live music, delicious bites from local restaurants, and of course, some wildlife viewing. Tickets are $65 for members, 70 for non-members. Historic Kirkwood presents the Kirkwood Wine Stroll. More than 40 locations will pour out samples of red and white wines, enjoy three stages of live music with food for purchase. Tickets are $50. The Imagine Music Festival is here. The weekend-long dance music and arts fest will feature famous music artists Diplo and Marshmello. Tickets start at $49. Stone Mountain Park hosts the annual Pumpkin Festival. Bring the whole family and enjoy shows, games, kids' activities, a pie-eating contest, and thousands of carved jack-o'-lanterns. Ticket prices vary. Head to Marietta Square for the Marietta Street Fest. You can support local artists and shop for all kinds of arts and crafts, paintings, pottery, and more. The fest includes grassroots music, a classic car show, and even a kid zone for the little ones. This is a free event. Now you have everything you need to make the most out of your weekend into ATL. Enjoy. So this is the exhibition Warhol in the West here at the Booth Western Art Museum. And it really is a review of Andy Warhol's entire life and his fascination with the West. So in the introductory part of the exhibition, you find things from his childhood. A Roy Rogers alarm clock. You find his scrapbook that had his photographs of celebrity actors. You also see his cowboy boots. And you'll see two or three of them have paint splattered all over them. Those are the ones he wore when he was working in the studio. He also has ones that are pristine. Those are the ones he would have worn when he went out to Studio 54 in the evening. Andy often said he was a mirror to America. He just reflected back who and what we were, whether it was Campbell's Soup or Howdy Doody. And that he didn't have any political acts to grind. He didn't have any social commentary in his work. Yet the works behind me, he does in 1976. And he asks around for who is one of the leading Native Americans involved in the civil rights movement for Native Americans. And he finds his answer out in this gentleman, Russell Means. Andy tweaks us a little bit by putting this body of work out there and saying, don't forget about the Native Americans and what we did to them during our history. So was he just the surface, as he often said? I don't think so. He was a little deeper than we think. After walking through a timeline of Andy's life and his relationship with the West, we wind up in the last gallery, which shows his Cowboys and Indians portfolio. It's the last major project he did before he died. It's 14 images that cover the history of the West and some of the most important personalities in the West. We've put with each image the source image that Andy worked from, that he appropriated from somebody or some place to create his vision of what the West was all about. There's never been an exhibition that put Andy's Western art in context of his whole career. It's a major traveling exhibition. It's going to be here in Georgia, then Oklahoma, then Washington State. And it is a once in a lifetime opportunity to see this body of work. Never been together before, probably never again. One of the best things about living in Atlanta is the weather. And one of the best spots to enjoy it is on a rooftop. Luckily, we've got plenty of them around town, but we happen to be at one of my favorites today here at Pont City Market. Skyline Park is so much more than just a spot to sip cocktails and take Instagram photos. You're in for a surprise, so let's go check it out. Marketing Director for Slater Hospitality here at Skyline Park. What is Skyline Park? Skyline Park is an amusement park that plays to our history of this old-timey park that was once here that people travel from around Georgia to come and see. And so we just kind of updated it with some fun games, still giving it that old-school kind of feel um, with new up-to-date kind of music and games, <laughs> but still playing to our history of the park that used to be here.
Thank you. Alright, this is what I get for winning one. I think I'm gonna call him Greg. I am so hungry after all those rides and my extensive arm workout, so I ordered a walking taco at many people's suggestions and then also a frankfurter as a backup and of course my frosé. All right, so let's try them. It's actually really, really good. That's really refreshing. Okay, so now I'm gonna finish these and not show you guys because it's about to go down in like two or three bites. Not sorry. I'm sure I will genuinely still be in a shop. That was close. I think it's safe to say that the slide is my favorite ride despite my excellent golfing abilities, but I'll definitely be back really soon because I'm already craving another walking taco. Obviously, Skyline Park is not your average rooftop and you'll definitely want to come check it out. I'm Kelly Audette for Access Atlanta. Welcome to the Georgia Aquarium. It has everything from the largest fish in the world, a whale shark, to some of the tiniest marine life. But there are some newbies on the block. Say hello to the puffins. I met up with animal trainer Melissa Painter, who told me all about this incredible group of seabirds. What's in these buckets, what we're about to feed the puffins? So we have a few different types of fish, but we also have this, it's called krill. It's a type of crustacean. Um, and fun fact, this is actually the same type of food that the whale sharks eat. But they eat a whole lot more. They eat a whole lot more <laughs> than this. They actually eat binfuls. So their throats are only about the size of a quarter. So you can't feed like these large fish to the whale sharks. As big as they are, they can only eat about that size. Oh, wow. Okay, so tell me about the puffins. Okay, so behind us we have um, two different types of puffins, horn puffins and tufted puffins. But we also have two pretty cool birds called pigeon guillemots and common murs. So they all belong to this family of birds called alcids. Um, and they have a great adaptation to where they can actually navigate underwater really well. So if you look at their wings, you can't tell as well right now, but they're a little bit shorter and a little bit more dense, so they can actually use them for propulsion underwater. Um, and if you want, you can actually reach out and feed a few of them. Let's do it. Yeah, so just reach into your bucket, okay. and if you want to, you can hold it out like that with head first, and then you can reach out and let him take it from you. Hey, bud. So you might become everyone's best friend right now, so I'll kind of help you out and feed a few as well. But you can see we have different types of fish we're feeding them. We do a nutritional analysis on all the food that comes into the aquarium, just so that we can meet all the different benchmarks that they need nutritionally. So how often do you feed the puffins? We can feed them anywhere from five to 10 times a day. So we try to keep it really variable for them because that's what they would be experiencing in the ocean also. Okay. So we do have a, um, an underwater feeding system called our Flying Fisher that actually moves food into the habitat underwater through a piping system. Oh, that is So neat. we have an underwater viewing window so that our guests can see that great adaptation of them being able to swim underwater because that's what they're known for. Where did these puffins come from? So most of these puffins actually came from the Alaska Sea Life Center. We okay. developed a partnership with them um, last year and we sent some staff out there to start learning about these species of birds as well as these individuals. And then they came to us last year and our habitat opened on January 19th. Um, here in our cold water quest gallery. And it's cold in here. It's really cold. It's actually the coldest habitat in the aquarium, both air temperature and water temperature. So the air temperature right now where we are is about 54 degrees and the water temperature is 49 degrees. In addition to doing these hand feeds, we also want them to do that natural behavior of diving underwater for their food. Okay. So what you're going to do is take a handful of food and you're gonna to toss it out to the habitat. And then you'll see immediately they all start diving underwater. How many pounds of food do you think they eat a day? They eat about four kilograms of different types of food each day. I left one more for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Templeton right here. And he got it. This is awesome. <laughs> thank you so much for yeah, having absolutely. us.
training to become a ninja or just looking to have some fun on a night out with friends. You can do both at Nitro Zone in Norcross. We offer go-karts, high-speed go-karts. They go up to 40 miles an hour. We do the kid karting. We have Bazooka Ball, the first of its kind in the state of Georgia. Uh, uh, indoor trampoline park with the uh, high-performance trampolines. We also offer the net structure and the American Ninja Warrior um, uh, obstacle course. Can you climb the warped wall? Survive Devil's Ladder. Test your strength, endurance, balance, and fitness across 30 different obstacles on the Ninja course, a course that was created and reimagined by a former American Ninja Warrior. The Ninja course is now top of the line, the biggest in the country. Um, we have a 45-foot obstacle that you come and experience your grip strength for all, and it's, it's fun for everybody. I've seen young kids in there, and we also have the, the ninja area for little kids, and we also have a ninja area for older kids. Once you become a ninja, head over to the trampoline park. It features 60 trampolines. Jump around or give dodgeball a go. Just a warning, those young kids can be brutal out there. They have something called bazooka ball. It's the first place in Georgia to have it. Think of it as paintball meets laser tag. It's a paintball gun that's uh, souped up on the, the air compressed, the CO2 compressed gas, uh, and the ball shoot up to 100 feet. The good news is you don't get covered in paint or welts like a round of paintball. The bad news is the kids still show no mercy. In Bazooka Ball, two teams battle for supremacy over several minutes, shooting the foam balls at one another, scoring points by hitting an opponent's gear. There's bowling for adults and kids alike. The same goes true for go-karts. Strap on your helmet and battle your buddies on the Nitro Speedway. Experience an adrenaline rush like no other, zipping through hairpin turns and hitting 45 miles per hour on the straightaway all while overtaking friends turn foes on the race course who sit literally a few feet away. Nitro Zone is at the intersection of Peachtree Industrial and Jimmy Carter Boulevards. For Access Atlanta, I'm Nelson Hicks. Hi guys, I'm Kamiko McCoy and you're watching Access Atlanta. I've been told at the office a couple of times that I'm funny and I offer the best knee slappers. So I've decided to go ahead and take my talents to the stage. We're here today for an improv class at Dad's Garage Theater Company in Old Fourth Ward, Atlanta. So let's go inside and check out what they've got. Allow me to introduce you all to Ed Morgan, Education Director here at Dad's Garage Theater Company. Um, so a couple of questions. Sure. First question I want to ask, in addition to the many things that you guys do here, tell me a little bit about the improv class that you guys host. So uh, tonight what we're doing is a special preview improv class that we offer to the community as a, a free experience so people can come and try an improv class for the first time without necessarily having to pay money and commit to eight weeks of, of training and stuff. So tonight is just sort of a fun way to see if improv feels like it's for you and if it is then right afterwards you can go online and register for our full classes all right kind of like dipping your toe in the water today. yeah yeah it's 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 more like being thrown into a pool i think but uh sort of sort of like that yeah fair fair <laughs> And we're here with Tommy Fudge, improv instructor. So what are some of the training methods that you guys introduced look like? Well, you know, uh, my philosophy, of course, is everybody's philosophy of wow. yes and, agreement with somebody else. But I also break improv down into uh, two things. One, it's, it's really a language, and it's also um, a, a behavior. And the language is that we're going to be communicating through positivity and collaborating and making each other right. And then the, the behavior is a com combination of mindfulness and empathy and kindness and just, uh, just trying to work together towards a common goal. And so if we create this culture of positivity, of yes and, uh, even the most fearful can suddenly realize, okay, my ideas are valid and you accept them. And what you're gonna do is this particular exercise. Uh, I'm gonna ring your doorbell and I want you to fling the door open and I'm gonna say happy birthday or a Merry Christmas or here's a gift. And we're gonna know each other. And I'm gonna hand you this box and you, the recipient, you're gonna open that box and you're gonna tell the person what they've given you. Hey, how are you? Happy Hanukkah. Oh, my gosh, thank you. 
a new purse. Yes, I know that you are carrying a lot of baggage, so I thought you might want a different place to put it instead of your heart. That was fun, but it looks like my 15 minutes of fame are up, so I'm gonna let somebody else take to the stage for a bit. If you're looking for Dad's Garage Theater, it's in Old Fourth Ward, Atlanta. They offer eight-week improv classes for $2.35 and free preview classes if you're interested. Again, I'm Kamiko McCoy for Access Atlanta. Break a leg. Thursday nights in the spring and summer, Alpharetta is the place to be. That's where you'll find the Alpharetta Food Truck Alley. Do you have to, do you have to Navigate to Old Roswell Street in historic downtown Alpharetta Thursday nights around 5 o'clock or let your nose guide the way. There, you'll find what else but an alley filled with food trucks. There are 7 to 10 trucks there Thursday nights and the schedule rotates so there's always something new to try. Area restaurants usually offer up something scrumptious too. From there, play some games. There are offerings for adults and kids alike. Enjoy dessert, enjoy a cold brew, or enjoy a sword fight. The choice is yours. There's always music, and the event is free to attend, but bring some cash for the food. Bring some chairs and a blanket if you want to hang out for a few hours as well. The event happens every Thursday night now through mid-October. For Access Atlanta, I'm Nelson Hicks. You're watching Access Atlanta on the WSB Now app, your source for local things to do. Good family fun is happening all month long. It's time to carve your way through the corn. Get educated about agriculture at the Buford Corn Maze. Now through November 10th, enjoy hay rides, a haunted forest, and more. Experience the rhythm and beauty of Japanese culture at Japan Fest Atlanta, September 21st and 22nd, at the Infinite Energy Center. Japan Fest will showcase more than 50 performances and workshops, and kids six and under get in free. The Atlanta Beltline lights up on September 21st, so grab a lantern or grab a friend. More than 70,000 people are expected out for the annual Lantern Parade. The event starts at 8 p.m. at the East Side Trail and ends in Piedmont Park. Enjoy fun rides, free concerts, and great food. It's all at the North Georgia State Fair, September 19th through the 29th at Jim R. Miller State Park in Marietta. Learn more about these events and print your family to family discount coupons at WSBTV.com slash community. A visit to the College Football Hall of Fame in downtown Atlanta will have you singing, kicking, and reliving some of the greatest moments in your team's college football history. The journey through college football's greatest moments, players, stadiums, and more begins here at the Helmet Wall. Every single college football team in America represented on this wall, 778 teams. It's the only place in America you're going to see that. Once visitors take in all 778 helmets and locate their teams, it's time to register. And this is what makes a trip to the Hall of Fame unique for fans from different teams. Registering provides fans with an all-access pass, a pass to their visit to the Hall. Make an appearance on the college football game day set and make a prediction for the big game? It's stored to your all-access passes locker that you can access long after you've gone home for the day. Paint your face for the big game. Perform your team's fight song. It's all stored for you to relive again or share. The all-access pass also is the key to much of the interactivity. A Bulldog fan doesn't want to learn all about Georgia Tech's history, and a Yellow Jacket could care less about those darn Bulldogs. With the pass, when a Tennessee fan approaches the 52-foot touchscreen wall, at the Why We Love College Football area, they can sing Rocky Top. A Miami fan is going to learn all about the U, and a Texas fan can hook them horns with Heisman Trophy winner Ricky Williams. The hall has over 65,000 pieces of digital content, and it's constantly growing. I wasn't expecting to see some moments from my alma mater, um, University of Arkansas. Um, getting to see some moments of history that I'm familiar with and was a part of, that was, that was a surprise. The interactivity doesn't end there. 
Can you kick a field goal? Make a touchdown throw? Win the game on a diving catch? Put your skills to the test on the indoor playing field? Afterwards, get some tips from Peyton Manning. He's waiting for you to walk up to him. And when you do walk up to him, he's going to tell you about all the regimen, how he ate, what his studies were, you know, how, how he kept a healthy lifestyle. Um, and that, I think that's a really important piece of what we're doing as well, is trying to bring the fan closer to the players. After talking over the game with Peyton, check out something he was never able to put his hands on, the Heisman Trophy. The National Championship Trophy and other top awards can be found in the Hall of Fame. Just being a football player, those kind of things, you know, some of the things you strive for and just getting to be that close to them, it was it was a great, it was a powerful moment. Oh, All was blocking, they got a, they got a wall going. Uh -oh, for Access Atlanta, I'm Nelson Hicks. There's something new playing on the Atlanta Beltline. It's just another thing adding to the city. This is wonderful. 88 colorful pianos have new temporary homes in public spaces for anyone to play and for everyone to enjoy. <laughs> you have that? 88 pianos because we have 88 keys on the piano. We have five Beltline locations, seven Marta Station, the airport, the King Center, Piedmont Park, you name it. The nonprofit Pianos for Peace works year round to bring unity through music and art. It just really, 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 really is essential to making our community a better place because music is a huge outlet, you know, for people to express themselves. Each piano is a canvas hand-painted by local and international volunteer artists. Being part of the community is when you put your hands on that, building that. So I, I am part of the Atlanta community and I want to give back something to Atlanta community. The pianos will be out there for three weeks and after that the nonprofit delivers the pianos to schools, nursing homes, healthcare facilities and community centers. With every piano, we transform both lives and communities by making the arts accessible to everyone. So it's all about togetherness. It's about our human shared values to live in peace and unite. So one of the things that we did in this offseason is we refreshed our uniforms. One of those was bringing back the red jersey. It was a fan favorite and we've returned that also with a little bit of tweaking to that. And on Fridays we're going to wear that red jersey. We're going to encourage our fans to also wear red. You know we're the only ballpark that has a zip line in it so that's pretty cool. If you're a kid and you want to try to do a zip line you don't normally think of a ballpark but you can do that here. I think the other thing is just really experience what we call is all the different neighborhoods throughout the ballpark. You know, a ballpark has lots of different spaces. They're not all the same. So whether you're at the below the chop and you're literally right there at that right field fence or you're in the Home Depot clubhouse and you're perched above left field or you're way up in the Xfinity clubhouse and all the different things, the experience of that, there's lots of different ways that you can experience a baseball game. And so it's really about coming to the ballpark, wandering around, maybe experiencing multiple games and just kind of checking it all out all while you're doing the tomahawk chop and Hi, I'm Amanda Bennett. I'm with Imaginary World, Alice's Wonderland at the Atlanta Botanical Garden. We chose Alice's Wonderland because it's a story everybody knows. It's very family friendly, it's so iconic, and it's graphic, it's bold, it's larger than life, um, which is exactly what these sculptures are. And we've made a 30 foot tall rabbit, unlike anything you can see anywhere else. We have 38 different types of plants on all of the sculptures here at the show, and all of them are picked very specifically. We pick these plants uh, so that they can withstand the Georgia heat all season. Uh, they take wind, they take rain, they take lots of sun, lots of heat. The effects that we're trying to achieve uh, help us figure out which plant to use based on how much we're going to shear it 
and the colors. You know, we wanted to mix up the colors. We wanted it to be very eye-catching, very poppy, very pretty. So all of that combined kind of narrows down to a certain set of plants for us. Behind me is the mermaid. Uh, it's a, a fan favorite, and it also happens to be one of my daughter's favorite pieces. You'll see that her tail is made into a scale pattern. And there's a trick that goes with shearing. So almost always there's two fingers in between one plant to the next plant. Um, so we shear so that there is a negative space and the eye doesn't necessarily pick it up, but it just makes the piece cleaner and crisper. The dragon is actually the same height as Earth Goddess. It's around 25 feet. It's one of our most dramatic pieces here. It's also one of the most beloved pieces here. Everyone loves the dragon. Everybody wants to take a picture with the dragon. The white rabbit, which is right behind me, is uh, the white rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. And we started uh, this piece and all of the planning for this show really started last year. We're always taking care of it. We're always trying to make sure that it is the most lifelike and the most well cared for from beginning to end. Well, I hope everybody can come out and see Imaginary World, Alice's Wonderland. It's the only botanical garden in the whole country that you can see this display. It's also the only display of Mosaic Culture International on display in the world right now. It's open through October, and if you want to see it lit up for night, come to our extended hours on Thursdays.